Now, the first question is, why do we evaluate anything? <laughs> why don't we just, yeah, don't believe it. Um, the, the reasons for that is that we're human. We make mistakes. We make slips. We, we get it wrong. And as embarrassing as it is, um, we all do it. And there's quite an industry, particularly the air transport industry, is very concerned about how um, the, the different types of errors we make. And because people will make errors, and the, that's not a problem. The problem is to try and prevent those errors from becoming serious errors or prevent the consequences of those. So it helps a lot in software development if we, if our work is reviewed by one or more people. Um, even the most uh, basic of reviews is better than no review at all. The whole idea is to find mistakes fast and fix them fast while we all have it in our head. Now, th this has been uh, had a look at, uh, studied, um, by, among other people, Larry Botter. Um, and the, the speed with which errors got fixed was very much directly related to how soon after they were reported uh, we, did somebody have a look at them. And the reason for that is that it takes a little while to get the whole um, concept in your head. And if, um, if an error is found, while the whole thing is still fresh in people's minds, then they're much more likely to be able to say, oh yes, okay, I didn't think of that, to know where to fix it and to go and be able to fix it quite quickly. So the faster we can do that, the better. Usually though, uh, more rigorous reviews uh, find, you know, find a different class of errors. Yeah, more rigorous reviews are better, but they're also more expensive. Uh, We'll have a look at things that have come out of the air safety uh, area. This is mostly the work of James Reason, uh, who has done quite a lot of work into um, investigating um, accidents in, in air safety. He's written a number of books. I have a couple of them uh, to do with um, human error. Um, and he is the person who, who did a great deal of very, uh, very good work in trying to distinguish between um, uh, errors because we're human and errors because we're incompetent. Now, in air transport, by the time somebody gets to fly a plane, they're not incompetent, uh, yet they still make mistakes. So the question is, how does this happen? Now, here we have, we divide things into modes of uh, interacting with the world. And at one extreme, we have um, interacting when we are not at all familiar with uh, what it is we're supposed to do. And here, a lot of the work and, and decision-making is extremely conscious, very manual, slow, and conscious. So uh, this is for uh, an unskilled or occasional user. Uh, it's a novel environment, it's slow, it, it's effortful, it takes a lot of effort. It requires considerable feedback to find out whether you've got it right or not. And the usual causes of error are things like overload, manual variability, lack of knowledge of modes of use, so we just don't understand what we're looking at, or lack of awareness of consequence. So we, you know, we, we understand what we're, what we're looking at, but we don't understand quite what the consequences of our decisions might be. Now, the other end of the scale is the skill-based automatic. That is, people have done it time and time and time again, and yet we still make mistakes. How does this happen? Well. Now we're talking about a skilled or regular user. It's a familiar environment, it's fast, and decision making is effortless, we think. The causes of error are strong habit intrusions. So we look at something, oh, it's a one of these, except it's not. But we treat it like a one of these, and consequently, consequently we get it wrong. Frequent and broke rule used inappropriately, same thing. I, was, I suppose it's a variation on the same thing. Um, we, we have a rule and we use it, and it's, it turns out to be not the kind of thing we should have done. Or situational changes that don't trigger the need to change habits. So most of those errors are, we're doing something out of habit, and we shouldn't have done. We, we were, um, they, we, we didn't quite look at the situation as thoroughly as we might. And as a consequence, we assumed a few things and got it wrong. 
Now, there is a continuum of errors and the potential of actions and the potential errors. Um, so you can see it there. Uh, it, it isn't a, you know, like all diagrams of this nature. It's, it's not as clean as that. It's not as smooth as that. But in terms of illustrating what's going on, it's not a bad illustration. Right? We start off at one edge, one end, um, where we're doing knowledge-based work. So in that diagram, it's right at the top. Here, the work is conscious, it's effortful, and uh, we make errors because we don't quite know how to make decisions, or we, we don't know what's the right decision to make. There isn't any proof. And there's inadequate information available for us to, to check that it's right. The other end of the scale, we have skill-based, which I've just reviewed, or just talked about, and um, this is where we, we know what we're doing, we think. Uh, and the errors arise from treating something uh, on our, uh, treating, treating something on its appearance, when we really ought to have looked a little harder or noticed something more. Now in the middle is your rule-based or, or best practice. So there's a combination of all those. We have heuristics, guidance, to, to teach us about it. We have slips, lapses, mistakes. Uh, we also have, um, uh, what was it called? Violations. Uh, a slip, slips and lapses. A slip is, is um, we, we knew what we were supposed to do, we just didn't do it. Um, we got it wrong. Um, so we, we, we thought we were doing the right thing. We intended to do the right thing. We knew what the right thing to do was. But somehow we didn't. I mean, we had finger trouble or something of that nature. A lapse is we, where we know what to do, but for some reason we didn't do it. So we just had a lapse. A mistake. Um, is where we um, uh, misunderstood the circumstances, we misinterpreted the symptoms and, and we got it wrong, all right? A violation is where we know what the situation is, we know what we're supposed to do, and we deliberately don't do it. Now, these are circumstances where the person making the decision has better information and has used their professional judgment to override what the normal rules are. Now, this this can happen, this can be quite legitimate. But if you're going to go in for violations, you better be ready to justify them. So, misconceptions there. Architect and client have different concepts of the problem. That's quite frequent, uh, especially at the beginning, because it takes quite a while for the client to explain what it is they're talking about. It takes quite a while for the architect to understand uh, what the client's talking about, and even longer for the both of them to agree, agree and have a common understanding of what's going on. Rules. Uh, we have um, you know, a, a breach of rules. Um, the architect might apply an inappropriate pattern, or you know, might create an inappropriate object or something. So we get good practice rules get broken. Uh, for example, the, the coupling and cohesion guidelines. There could be reasons for that. Slips and lapses. Uh, using an incorrect diagram. Uh, something's missing. There's an inconsistent change or inconsistency between different views. But this happens, you get a slip and, slips and lapses in, in uh, documenting something, particularly something as complicated as software architecture, with as many diagrams that, in the end, have to be consistent. The goals of our evaluation? Um, the simplest goal is, will it work? Will it provide the functionality that we want and the uh, non-functional qualities that we want? Will it work? So usually we check that something will achieve its objectives and we assume that the implementation will not alter the intentions of the architecture. Now that's not a valid assumption because quite frequently the implementation details do alter the intentions and if somebody's awake, they'll actually go back and check with the architect and say, well look, we're going to implement it a little bit differently. So not only do we check will it work, um, but preferably we'll also check, will it fail? Can it fail? And uh, failure, you know, a failure of the architecture is also a failure to prevent an, uh, a failure. Uh, so 
by that I mean we're talking about things like uh, robustness and reliability, where if the system fails, that's a failure. So our architecture has to prevent those failures as much as possible, and a failure of the architecture is a failure to prevent the system failures. Right? Too many words chasing each other. Now the reason why we do this, although frequently people just do not do it that well or often or as thoroughly as they should, is that architecture lasts a long time. It's something that's created or, or determined largely very early in the project where we really don't have that much knowledge and it lasts a long time and you essentially you, you're condemned to live by it. So try and get it right. A failure focused review will require a lot of imagination, uh, frequently. Uh, a lot of the, the uh, very serious errors that come out of like critical situations, uh, such as um, in nuclear power plant operations, uh, is one where there's quite a lot of effort goes into investigating um, uh, accidents. And the finding that comes down is that the accidents happen when, when four or five impossible things happened at the same time. That is, it's supposedly impossible for that valve to be in that configuration. It's supposedly impossible for that, that instrument to, to, to fail and to get the wrong thing. It's supposedly impossible, and on and on and on, and you get a stack up of four or five of these impossible things, and all the compensating actions just can't cope, and so you get an error. Now, if you're doing a review of the architecture, it's really difficult to try and imagine all of those impossible things. It's, it's just very hard to do. So you need some, some uh, old, older people hanging about the place because they've seen a lot of the failures and they just don't believe in that. Like over so the goal is to identify and acknowledge the possibility of failure and its circumstances, not to eliminate them. Uh, Trying to eliminate the, uh, the uh, cause of the failure uh, is a different problem that could come later. Uh, so in summary then, we are human, we will make errors. We will generally all make slips, lapses and mistakes. It's, uh, I'm not worried about violations because uh, usually if somebody uh, violates a guideline, there's really good reasons for it and they can explain it. So mostly what we want to review the architecture for are slips, lapses and mistakes. All right, we have two goals. Will this thing work? Will it deliver what it's supposed to deliver? The second goal is, will it fail? Will it fail to deliver or will it fail to prevent?